But does anybody have any prior requests? No. Is everybody hearing me? Yes, this is a sorry. I'm hearing. This is a sorry. Yes. Can I add Zahi Walters to the list, Pastor? He yes. had a car accident and he's in coma. He's about. Mm, I think What's the name, Sister Debbie? Zahi Walters. Spell? Z H I E. Zahi. Okay. Okay. Walters is W O L. W O U L T E R S. Yes. And um, the father just, the father um, says that the doctors them say that they can't do nothing for him anymore because I think he, he have a lot of concussion and stuff in his brain. So horrific. Um, Everybody can keep him in the prayer. Okay, thank you, Sister Debbie. There is nothing too much for God to do. Amen. All right, anybody else? Okay, then, so we have 45 persons on the list. So our first prayer will be by Brother Joseph. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, I, have, I say happy Sabbath to everyone. And thank you so much for this opportunity, Sister Sashoy. And we are going to pray as... <laughs> You mentioned earlier there is this is a very long list, and you know, so we are all, even though our names are not mentioned in the list, we are all indeed need prayer. So we're going to pray, and I also will ask for each and every one of us to whisper a prayer in our heart so all those voices, you know, can get more power to reach heaven. All right, so. Let us pray. The Heavenly Father, God of the universe, we are indeed thankful this morning for allowing us to be alive. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity this morning to see another Sabbath day. A day, Lord, that you have been blessed since the beginning. And then now, Lord, we have this day as a sign of the creation. And also, Lord, where we can rest from our labor, where we can worship, adore you. So, Lord, we are indeed very thankful and privileged that, Lord, we can assemble in this fashion. Even though, Lord, we are located in different um, places, but Lord, to the, um, those medium, Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, so Lord, we can come in one accord to worship you. So Lord, we are so thankful. And I pray for this ministry, Lord, in which we have been blessed and which so many souls have been touched. So Lord, we thank you for that. This morning, Lord, we about to pray for your people. A lot of people, Lord, they have been requested um, prayer 
for themselves, their families. So Lord, we have in a very special way, we have Sister Touch Elliot. We have Sister Cassandra. We have Christobel Francis. We have Lorna Raymond. We are praying, Lord, for Dawn Walker, Giovanni Saunders. We pray, Lord, for David Davis. And also we pray for Sister Brown's sons. And I pray, Lord, for the youth of our Uber and the youth in the world. The Lord, I pray in a very special way for all the youth in the world. You know, Lord, they are the future of the church. I know, Lord, you will be with them. You will continue to provide for them. You will keep them strong. Those who are going to school, those who are planning to do anything for their future lives. I pray, Lord, you will continue to strengthen them, help them to remain focused and to always remember you. And Lord, I pray for family of Alex Richardson. I pray for certain sisters and sisters, Terry's daughter and niece. We pray for Sister Wilson. I pray, Lord, for Sister Ermin McDonald. We pray for Kim Collins. Martha family, Mother Campbell um, from Riches. We pray also for Sister Karen McDonald's. Um, she's having heart issues. Lord, you, you are the doctor by, excel, by excellence. I know, Lord, you can do divine healing. So, Lord, I pray for her in a very special way. I pray, Lord, for those who are having entrances to serving you. So Lord, I pray Lord, you will give them wisdom. You will touch them, Lord, and let them remember you and be thankful for all that you have done for us. I pray for Elder Kenel's mother, wife's mother, and Lord, I pray for Sister um, Kamali and Gordon family in Portmore, Jamaica, Sister Erica Cummins and family, Nelson's family, we pray for Domoy, Ross, ben, Benabella, Vivian Baptist, Lowe's family, Thompson family. We pray for Brother David's nieces and family, Mrs. Brown and Angela Pinnock, Alexia Campbell, Cassandra Ferguson, we pray for Mr. Kurt family. Mrs. Brown and Angela Pinnock. Um, we pray for Cheris Hammond. We pray for the Joseph family. Also, Lord, we pray for Sister Tanisha family. We pray for Sylvester's sons. We pray for Sister Lee's family, Mr. Luke and family, friends and Joseph family, David Davis relatives and families. Brother Henry family and relative. We pray for Sylvester Cooper, Sasha Gay William, and we pray for Venton Jr., Sister Davina McFarlane, and Lord, we are praying also, Lord, for Zai Walters. We have heard of his recent um, accident, and also, Lord, how critical his situation is. But Lord, you are the doctor. You are the physician. Even though the doctors said there's no way, there's no hope, but Lord, you are the God of the impossible. You can change bad to good. So Lord, I pray for him at this time and also we pray for the family. May you strengthen them, help them to have faith in you. Let them not to be discouraged because we are serving you as a mighty God. So Lord, I pray for each and every one of us, for those who didn't have the chance to put their name in this list. We are all in need of prayers, Lord. We are all have different challenges in our lives. So Lord, we put all our challenges before you. So, Lord, we are praying also this morning, Lord, for giving us the passion 
to bring the gospel out, not to keep it for ourselves, but help us, Lord, to share it with others and give us the, um, the scales that we need, Lord, we can carry on. And Lord, give us our personal testimony. Give us an experience personal with you, Lord, where, Lord, we can share your, your love. We can share all that you have done for us with others, and they can be edified, and Lord, they can give their lives to you. We pray for the remaining of the service today. Be with everything that is going uh, to be done today. And at the end, Lord, we will, your name will be glorified. Be with us, forgive us small heart sins. Help us, Lord, to remain connected to you and to have our eyes fixed only on you until you come. These are the mercies and blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is Sasha Shaw, are you there? Amen. Yes, I am. Yes. Thank you, Brother Joseph. Now we have Brother Trevor for the second prayer. Brother Trevor, right? Sister Sasha, you may have to do it. It doesn't seem like he's on. Okay, let us pray. <clears throat> Our kind of most righteous heavenly father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here today. We thank you for waking us up this morning in our right minds. I pray that as we approach your throne just now, that you lift us up as we lift up these requests unto you. It's a very lengthy one, and I can't remember all of them, but I pray that each one of them who has lifted up their requests unto you, that you strengthen their hearts and strengthen their faith without wavering, that you grant unto us according to our measure of faith. We lift up Sister Cassandra Ferguson to you now, Brother David Davis, the Nelsons, Sister Lee, Sister Sylvester's mom, the Gardens, Sister McDonald, the youth of Aruba and the world, Sister Cassandra Ferguson, just to name a few. I pray that you guide and protect each one of them and those who are healed, that you grant them healing from the fountain of living water. Touch each one of them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and deliver them from all ailments. For you're the God of God and the Lord of Lords, the great physician. We look to you now, through your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Yes, so now we hand over back to you, Sister Debbie. Thank you very much, Sister Shashoy. And thank you for our prayer warriors that interceding and for the throne of grace and sending prayer straight up to heaven. Thank you. We want to continue with two inspirational songs that part of giving honor and glory to our Creator. Pastor, are you there? Yes, Sister Debbie, we are here. Pastor and the crew, thank you very much. All right, so we're going to take our first hymn. Oh, day of rest and gladness. 
O day of rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm of care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on thee the high and lowly, who bend before the Um, Pastor, what's the other song? We can hardly hear you. You're not hearing me? No. 83. We worship the King. It's gone completely now. We're not hearing you at all. Are you hearing me better now? A little bit. All right. So we are going to do song number 83. 83. Hymn number 83. family thank you guys very much for those wonderful hymns to continue to remind us that god is our master our creator and our friend thank you very much
um, our scripture reading by Sister Brown will be taken from Isaiah 41 to 10. Sister Brown, are you there? Yes. Thank you, Sister Brown. You may go ahead. Okay. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you, sweetheart. Isaiah 40, verse 1 to 10. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Say your, say your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she had re received of the Lord's hand a double for all her sins. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway of our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodness thereof is as a flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord, the word of our God shall stand forever. O Zion, that brightest good, that bringeth good tidings, get ye up into the high mountains. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid say unto the cities of judea behold your god number um, verse 10 behold the lord god will come with strong hand and his arm shall rule for him over and sorry behold the lord god will come with strong hand and his arm shall rule for him behold his reward is with him and his work there before him Hearing that the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Amen, Sister Brown. Amen. Thank you very much for that wonderful reading. We want to continue with a prayer by Sister Thompson. Sister Thompson, are you there? Mr. Hyson, are you there? It seems like she's on. Doesn't seem she's on, Sister Debbie. Sorry, Pastor. Doesn't seem like Sister Thompson is on. No, I haven't seen it neither. Um, I will do the prayer. I'm going back to Nilong, sorry. <laughs> okay, may we continue with our word of prayer? Please bow your head. Who wants to kneel can go ahead. Kind and wonderful Savior, into your hands we lead and leave each one of us. Father, on this platform, we know that we are together and you are visiting your children continue to be with us dear lord throughout this sabbath day father into your hands this morning i really want to pray lord and i know you're hearing me for walters father the doctors says that they cannot do anything no more but I know, Lord, that you are our great physician. There's nothing that you cannot do. When mankind say, no, we can't, it's because your hand is ready to stretch out and touch whoever it is. Father, in your mercy, I leave him. I pray for also for the family for strength. 
Father, because I know it's not an easy road. Continue to be with them, be with our families. Those on other platforms there, Father God, on your Sabbath day, I pray for them. Pray for all the pastors. May you continue to lead them. May you continue to intercede on their heart, dear Father God. Continue to be with them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, I want to continue with our health focus. Sister Sylvester, are you there? Good morning. Morning, sweetheart. How are you? How was your week? And a God blessed week. Amen. Amen. Hi, Brother Sylvester. Hi, Sister David. <laughs> blessed day to you. Same you day. may take over, Sister Sylvester. Well, I have a treat for you this morning, Sister Debbie and others. Um, my name is on the program, but we are two. We are all those years ago when when he said when the pastor said, um, "They two shall become one." Amen. One. So I'm giving you my other half this morning. I hope Amen. you don't mind. I Thank have. You. Thank you, Jesus. I really wanted him to be him. Sorry about that. Uh, Sister Debbie, you're something else. Um, so I must say that I have mine lined up, but for another week, but I, I thought that it was good to give him to you guys this week. So Amen. I'm going to get up and hand him over. God bless. Happy God Sabbath, bless everybody. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Brother, happy Sabbath. Good morning. All right. So I'm going to be sharing with you all this morning. I'm, uh, uh, could the host give me screen? I'm going to be sharing with you this morning on a topic that is what we call morbid. It's not a very happy topic. But I will give you the reason why I'm sharing this topic. It will have to be done in two parts. Thank you. I guess you're all seeing it now. Yes, Hello? we are. You are. All right. So anybody want to just tell me what it is and then I'll give you my reason for doing it. Actually, I was thinking there's a lot of women actually does have um, cancer in their womb, the neck of their womb. It's, yes. it's, it's something that that constantly um, attack the the, um, the ladies and a lot of it is going around these days. All right. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Anybody else wants to come in before we move on? This is a ladies topic, you know, so you guys shouldn't be shy at all in Sister Brown. <laughs> Bring no, back not. Sister. No, we're Bring not back Sister. <laughs> Brother Sylvester. Yes, sister. Good morning. Yes, sister. Good morning, everyone. Bring back Sister Sylvester and won't be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I need to give the motive. Sister Brown, you, you're going to say anything, Sister Brown? No, and that that grounds I'll just stand by beside you. Oh, I'm, I'm right beside you. Beside him. You're not seeing me? Yes, I see. Yes, All I right. see you. <laughs> Give me here, man. I'm All right. right beside you. So let me give you the reason. Um, I have a family member that I my mother introduced me to in 1999. And she was a nurse. And um, she was a nurse, yes. And the long and short of the story is that she died of cervical cancer in 2017. Uh, as part of my uh, of my profession, if I should put it that way, and what my company does, which is the Jamaica Cancer Society, I used to go out and do a lot of talks about cervical cancer. And I have to tell you that 
I do not recall telling her one day that you need to do your pap smear. And uh, when it all came down, I, I felt like it was a major dereliction of duty on my part for having never mentioned it to her. I assume that, you know, she, she knows she's a nurse, whatever. So I would say that the motivation for doing this talk is that there's quite a, a lot of women here on this platform. And therefore, I do not want to be derelict in my duty in reminding you to take care of yourselves. I hope I've said it nicely, right, Debbie? Amen. Thank All you. All right. So, so real quickly, because as I said, this has to be done in two parts. Normally, when I'm asked to present, it takes an hour or more. I, 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 so I, I have to keep this simple. But feel free to ask whatever questions you like. All right? So... Let's see if we can get this going. All right, so that's the, that's the symbolism they use to describe cancer. As you can see, it's a crab with many legs. What that means is that when it is spreading, it moves off in all kinds of direction to find somewhere else to go and latch onto. That's what it really means, all right? Now, I want to go back to the Bible because, you know, when I took out these texts, my wife says, boy, but these don't look like, like cancer. Well, let's look at what it says here. In Exodus 9, 8, the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, take to, your, to you a handful of ashes of the furnace and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it, should, it shall become like dust in all the land of Egypt, and it shall be a boil breaking out with, bl with blames uh, upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward him and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. Now, what does this word boil and blain mean? So the Hebrew here says it's to burn, it's inflammation, that is an ulcer and it's a boil. And I can tell you, it can become ulcerated, all right? And it can cause burning. And there are more extreme symptoms that one can feel. So the other word is from inflammation, especially a tumor in the anus or pudenda or piles here. Um, so usually when we talk about tumor, we say it can be benign or metastatic. So all of them would start out as a tumor, meaning it's a swelling, it's a growth or something like that. All right, so it can be inflammatory because some of them do burst out. And I'm speaking in general terms now, not specific now to cervical cancer. Now, here's a man who had something, and here's the emphasis. Hezekiah was sick unto death. And cancer can make you sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And the recommendation to him then was to take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. So he was sick unto death, and he had a boil. All right, so one of the things about curses is that it can cause problems in the secret parts. Deuteronomy 28, 15, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hang unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe with all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Deuteronomy 28, 27, the Lord will smite thee with the botch, same inflammatory process, with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. So 1 Samuel 5, 9, and it was so that after they had carried it about, this was when they were carrying about the Ark of the Lord when the Philistines had captured it. That was against the city with a great destruction, and he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they had emeralds, you could say piles in their secret parts. Now here's another attack on the secret parts. He says here, because... More of the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. And uh, it says here, therefore the Lord will smite the scab of the crown of the head of the daughters 
of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And it came to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of a well set here in ballers, instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, burning instead of beauty. So I went to look up the secret parts here. And the secret parts here, as it relates to these women he were talking about, is the Hebrew word 86596. And it says it's from an unused root, meaning to open a hole that is hinge or the female pedonda, hinge secret part. So the word female per pedonda refers to the female genitalia. All right. So let's give you some general information. It's the second leading cause of cancer deaths in women, birth being the first one, breast cancer rather. And in Jamaica, it is said that over 300 women die per year from cervical cancer. I think that's the real pandemic among others. All right, so I want to talk about some risk factors, keeping it very simple. So I think there are some women who are wholly unaware. They have no idea what's going on. That's what I refer to as ignorance. There are some who know, but that's all, they know and they do nothing. And then you have those who know, who understand, and they're not doing anything about it. That's negligence. There's also history. So it's likely that if it runs in the family, you should really pay attention. Multiple partners, everybody knows what that is. And there's HIV infection as well as HPV infection. So right off the bat here, I'll tell you that in my experience, once there's HIV infection, that person will likely get what we call HPV infection and even herpes, all right? And the last one I have here is if you, you don't do it regularly or you don't do it any at all, it puts you at risk. All right, so a little bit on the anatomy or the description. So uh, this discussion is below the navel down into the area of the groin. So that's where those organs are located. That's where the womb is. That's where the, the ovaries are. And the cervix is done right at the bottom of the womb, which enters into the secret part. Hello? Anybody there? At the back yes. of the secret part. Is the yes, we're here. Is here. Yes, we are here. I'm being, told, I'm being warned of time here. So let me jump on. So this is what it looks like normally. I tried to spare you all. And by the way, one of the reasons why it's secret, you know, is that you cannot see from outside. You have to use special instruments to be able to look there. So this is what a normal one looks like. I made sure not to show you any abnormal ones because they don't look so pretty. So here are what it says look like when they are normal. All right, nice little pink ones. We call them squamous cells. And we also have some endocervical cells. These are the ones which goes up into the birth canal. All right. So majority of the cancers are on the flat squamous cells I just showed you, all those pink and blue ones. And the other 5%, they begin up into the canal. All right. So most of them is caused by HPV, as you see, they're 95%. And whereas the other 5% are not from HPV. So what is HPV? There are over 100 types of HPV. Um, if you have skin warts, it is caused by certain types of HPV. Now, it is, it is said that the, the, main, the main ones that cause cervical cancer is type 11, 16, 18, and 33. Men are asymptomatic carriers of these um, viruses. All right? So a man will have it, but it will affect the woman. All right, so that's what your HPV change looks like. So if you remember the normal cell, if I can quickly drop back up there and show you, that's the normal one there. And this is when the changes take place. It looks very different. So if you look on your left, you will see the normal ones on the right. That's when the virus gets in and begin to cause some abnormal growth. And that's your cancer. And by the way, there are several types, there, there are several renderings of it. This is when it has not invaded or spread as yet. This is when it's just right there on the surface. All right, so what do we do? Um, I recommend, the recommendation is that you should do a pap smear. 
All right. What age should what age should they um, begin to do a pap smear? All right. So the recommendation is that once they have become active, within two to three years after they should be checking. All right. That's why that's why we want them to wait till they come of age. All right. Okay. Oh, um, do. Who, who is that? Sister Tanisha. Yes, Sister Tanisha, your question is? How often do they do a pap smear? All right, so the, 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 it, it would be every year, and if, if say, for a two-year period, you're normal, you can skip a year, OK? But I would say if you make five years pass and you don't do it, you're in the negligence category. Because down here, they're saying while you're about 40. While you're about 40? Yeah. While you're about 40, what? 40 years old. Mm -hmm. okay. That's when you should do it? Yeah. Uh... Which I don't find, which I don't find, um, find it right. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I think your issues are a little bit different there. It is widely available here, widely. I mean, a woman can get a pap smear for free here, whereas a man cannot get a prostate exam here necessarily so readily. No, but by we, all is free. Everything yeah, I know it's free, free, but you have, your health system is a little bit, is very different. A little bit, not, not yes. that much, I think. Yeah, yeah, your health system is very different. Here, we don't need, the ladies don't need no appointment. They walk into the clinic. That's the difference. All right, so where where these smears are not available in parts of the world, they do something called a visual inspection with acetic acid. They paint it over the cervix. If there's any growth there, it will show up looking whitish, and then they can do what we call a biopsy. All right, so basically the lady is placed in a supine position like she's having a baby. The, 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 the cervix is visualized using a special instrument called a spectrum and then the cervix is sampled. All right, so quickly on symptoms. Um, some women have no symptoms. Okay, we just pick it up on the pap smear, that's it. The nurse, the nurse sends you a pap and then it says, she says, normal, so it looks normal. And then when we, when we examine, it's all there. We have here instrumental in, intramenstrual bleeding. That means they're having an abnormal bleeding. We call it PV bleed between their periods. Okay. It is not always a sign of, of cancer. It could be that she's having fibroids and she's bleeding, but you always must rule it out. Then you have postcoital bleed. Um, I don't like to use the word sex and Sabbath, but that's what coitus means. So it can happen after. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it is cervical cancer. You rule it out using the screening test called the PAP. And then we have, they're having pain during the process. That doesn't mean it is, but you always need to rule it out as one of the causes, because there could be other causes. All right. Um, so this was a question being asked, all women 18 years and older who have ever, better said for me, I would say if you're not a virgin, all right? They said three years here after the first contact, all right? Um, 25 to 54 years, Debs, with two normal annual smears, should do a smear every three years up to the age of 65. Now I'm telling you the recommendation here, which says 65 years and old life previously screened regular with normal results may discontinue after discussion with a doctor. Um, my experience has been that it don't, there's no limit on the age when it can occur, okay? Um, there's even a recommendation that if a woman is a castrate, meaning that she has removed her womb for cervical cancer and um, because sometimes they remove the womb, but they don't remove the, the, um, the, the cervix, okay? But if everything has been removed, people are being told that they should never, they, they don't need to have a pap. That's not my experience. My experience is that I have seen pap smears from women who have had their cervix removed. They take the smear from the wall of their vagina and I see HPV there and it's growing, all right? 
Okay. Uh, so if you have a, if an abnormal smear is found, if there are abnormal cells on the smear, it does not usually mean that the person has cancer. Some abnormal cells can resolve themselves, but there are others where it just continue growing. And if it is not monitored and treated, then it can become cancerous. Now, abnormal changes can be mild, they can be moderate and severe. So that's why we have to pay attention to them. If it is severe, you can call it cancer. If it's moderate, it's in between. If it's abnormal, if it's just mild, it can resolve or they will watch it over time. So this is the last slide. It says, if it is detected in the early stages, it can be cured and measures can be taken to try to destroy those cells. So I would say to the ladies, what I, re what I neglected to tell my relative, I'm telling you that early detection saves lives. And if you haven't had your pap smear this year, or if you had it two years ago, or if it's time, please to get it done. Thank you all. Any questions? No, not on my side. Okay. It looked like I was speaking to the converted. Why? Well, nobody has any question, right? Right, Sister Brown? I'll, I'll call you and ask. All right. So there's going to, there's going to I'm, if I'm allowed, I'll do a part two. I see a chat here. Um, Sasha, okay. Is abnormal cells at this? Oh, she said she was barely hearing. Is abnormal cells at the cervix? Sasha? Yes, sir. Okay, so your question was, it's abnormal cells at the cervix? What, what, what is it you're asking? No, it wasn't a question. It was a statement. In regards to? You had asked about um, cervical oh, cancer. What is cervical cancer? Okay, thank you, sir. All right. All right, Sister Brown, you were beside me? Yes, sir. You did a very good job of it. Thank you, Sister Brown. I will, if, if and when I'm given the privilege, I will definitely do part two. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Um, quick question. Somebody has a quick question? Yes. Yeah. Um, where the HPV virus is concerned, I um I know someone who had the virus, well, HPV, and um the man divorced and remarried, and the wife, the, the new wife had the virus. Is it a case where the man can be the carrier or all right? So let me go back, let me go back to the screen. Um, it's a very good question, um, Shreesh, right? Right, that's a very good question. And the answer to your question is yes. I just wanted to show you the slide where I have it there that men are asymptomatic carriers. Are you seeing it on the bottom here? Yes, I'm seeing it. Right, they're asymptomatic carriers. So what that means is that he's not affected by it. Just like how you have some people who have HIV virus and they don't have any symptoms, you know that? Mm. Right. So men are asymptomatic carriers. And yes, I know of cases where men, men uh, where man wife die and him get another wife and she dies. Same thing from, from, from cancer of the cervix. So is it, is there a treatment for that person? For the man? Yes. <laughs> mm. That I'm aware of in a series. In fact, he, he, they just have to find some barrier method to use. Mm. Mm. Um, I, I can tell you, I, we had a case uh, years ago at my office where one of our branches called in and said, oh, but the other day, um, this woman, she was positive, da, 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 da. but no, how come it come back negative? So my boss, you know, was a little thing. She called me up to the office. I said, hold on, boss. Let me check this. Um, let, let's check the, the address of this lady. Maybe she changed her address and she changed her mind. So we came to the conclusion that given the change of address between the two locations in Manchester, it looked like, she, not Manchester, St. Elizabeth, it looked like she had changed her partner. So I'm not aware of any treatment, um, Sister Therese, um, from a medical point of view, let me say that. Okay, Hello? thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right, so it's it's we are clear. All right. Okay, sisters. Hope I did you 
justice by giving you this gentleman today. Have a happy Sabbath. Thank you, sister. You did well. <laughs> thank you, Sister Sylvester, very much. And um, thank you, Brother Sylvester, for um, stepping in for your wife. I know she will feel very much happy that um, you give that information. All right, Sister Levy. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you guys. Happy right? Sabbath. And, uh, hugs and kisses for mommy for me we want to continue with our musical item by sister mcdonald okay good morning and happy sabbath to everyone good morning and happy sabbath to you sweetheart you. you may continue like a weary travelers in this world i'm passing through and my journey my doubts are many and my hopes are only a few i've been up on the mountain top and i've been down in the valley too. This road of travel is not an easy one, but by faith I'm moving along. For with Jesus I'll make it, all my need will supply. Though I'll be cast down in pain and shame, and this world pass me by, for that's when Jesus left me. Though we come, He said, "My child, you are gonna make it." Because I'm right by your side. And my journey that falls before me and is trying to block me with fear. The way seems hard and rocky, and it seems my life end is near. Then I remember those evil boys. In the fire, he did not let them die. And I'm sure he walked with me, so neither will I. For with Jesus, I'll make it. All my need will supply. Though I'll be cast down in pain and the shame, and this world pass me by, for that's when Jesus left me. Though we come out, He said, "My child, you're gonna make it." Because I'm right by your side. And my journey that falls before me and is trying to block me with fear. The way seems hard and rocky, and it seems my life end is near. Oh, then I remember those evil boys. In the fire, he did not let them die. And I'm sure he walks with me, so neither will I. For with Jesus, I'll make it. All my need will supply. Though I'll be cast down, in pain and shame 